today we're going to show you how to hack your own Campari. It's been around for over 100 years. It's sweet, it's warm, it's complex, it's bitter, it's a staple in every bar. We're going to be using cranberries to hack our way to get the color and the flavor in our own Crampari. Right off the bat, we know that we need a dilution of ABV around 24%. So we're gonna start off with an alcohol that's 40%. You gotta think about the cranberries. Maybe they contain about 80% juice. So that's gonna help with the dilution. Sugar is gonna dilute the ABV as well. Real simple. We're gonna start off with a wide mouth mason jar. You get your cranberries in there, fresh or frozen. Either way, I like to make sure they're thawed. That's gonna make muddling a little bit easier. Let's get our sugar. So we got our cranberries and we have our sugar and we're gonna muddle it. We're gonna extract out as much flavor and juice as possible. If you only have frozen berries, just run them underwater for, I don't know, 15, 30 seconds and it'll make muddling a lot easier. You don't have to muddle it. If you have an immersion blender, you can do that too. This takes a little longer than you think. All right, now we have the majority of the berries all beat up. The next part is we're gonna be adding orange pith to it. We're adding the orange pith because we like the bitterness. Orange is an important flavor in Campari, so we're gonna be adding it fresh and dried to this base. So I actually don't use the zest with has all the oils in it because I feel like it actually overpowers the Cranpari and you lose the cranberry flavor in there. So what we're doing is we're gonna hack it a little bit. So we're gonna remove the zest, but we're gonna save that under a damp towel for when we go to make Negronis or Spagliato. For the most part, all the outside the zest is removed, so now we're down to the pith. Pith, bitter, great flavor to match the Campari. Now we're gonna add our pith in with the cranberries and sugar. Beat it up a little bit more. This is all about extracting flavors. You gotta bruise it up, beat it up. Now to finish off our base, we're gonna add our spirit to it. Um, I've been using vodka, 40%. If you wanted to, to add even more botanicals to it, you could substitute a gin, it's your call. Um, but I like to use vodka, it's cheaper, it's a neutral flavor, so that way you're more in the driver's seat. Campari, nobody knows the recipe. There could be hundreds of botanicals in there, who knows? But here is five to six ingredients you can add that will get you in the ballpark. So we have ginseng, wormwood, we got rhubarb, gentian, angelica, and a little bit of dried orange peel. If you go out to shop for these to try this recipe, don't buy in bulk, buy a small amount. The flavors will change over time and it will deteriorate. So cranberries are packed full of pectin. So once this is cooked and that pectin is hydrated at room temperature, this base liqueur is gonna actually jelly up a little bit. We don't like that because we're trying to mimic the texture of Campari. So we're gonna actually add an enzyme called Pectin X. Depending on the temperature you're cooking it or infusing it at, there will be different times where it'll actually be more activated. So Pectin X is typically most active around 50 degrees Celsius or like 122 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's why we're cooking at sous vide helps with breaking down the pectin at a more rapid rate. Lid on. So. So we're gonna let this infuse for about an hour or so. You can do it a little bit longer. Um, but what's happening here is we're extracting all the flavor as well as that pectin X is fighting the pectin right now. So it's breaking it down. So that way when we go to strain it, it's easier and we have the right texture at room temperature or from the fridge. When I was working on this, I ran a bunch of trials where I did cold infusions for one to two days in the fridge um, at this temperature of 50 degrees Celsius and hotter, even stovetop. The reason why I settled on this is because it's the fastest. Um, if you were to do it stovetop or at higher temperatures, you're gonna extract more of the bitter compounds. I know that's what we want, but bitter isn't always a good flavor. You need the flavor of the gentian, the wormwood, and the ginseng to come through as well. So this is the cleanest flavor I've found in the minimal amount of time. It's been an hour, it's done infusing. All we gotta do is strain it and we can start the party. So whenever I'm straining, I start with coarser sieves, then work my way down to a finer micron. Even though you might get a couple more sieves dirty, it makes your job a lot easier. Start with the coarse but fine mesh sieve. Don't simply stop there. 
There's a ton, ton of good flavor that's still in the berries and the peels that soaked up the moisture. So we're gonna press it out. Look at all that. So when I like to strain this, I do coffee filters or Chemex filters. Right off the bat, we're looking for this to not be cloudy. It's gotta have a beautiful crimson color to it, like Campari. Campari, cool enough, um, until 2006, they were actually using um, beetles to color it. We're just removing the last of the solids that made it through our coarser sieve. Whew, look at that. Beautiful red, crimson color, it's clear. Where's the Campari? Is it exactly the same? No, but we're using cranberries. It's for the holidays. I think it's close enough. Very aromatic. You get the cranberries. It's not lost to too, having too many botanicals in there. All right, so from here, let's make some cocktails. That's our tip and trick on how to hack Campari into Cranpari using cranberries. It's easy, it's fun, the flavor is incredible. Make your favorite cocktail, go to Chef Steps for other fun cocktail hacks, tips and tricks, and recipes. So thank you, give it a try. Mm -hmm.